Imagine the unimaginable. The world's largest superpower, the United States, comes under a nuclear threat as missiles rain down from the sky. ICBMs, or Intercontinental Ballistic Missiles, hurtle toward American soil, launched from distant lands like Russia or North Korea. It's a nightmare scenario, one that seems too terrifying to entertain. But the reality is, nuclear ICBMs could hit U.S. soil within 30 minutes after launch. The question is, can the U.S. defend itself against this kind of attack? Before we explore the United States defense systems, it's essential to understand the missile threats it's up against. These are no ordinary missiles. They are weapons capable of annihilating cities and altering the course of history. Russia remains one of the U.S.'s most significant nuclear threats, given its extensive arsenal and its position as a major military power. Russia's nuclear doctrine allows for the first use of nuclear weapons, particularly in response to conventional threats or in regional conflicts. Some key Russian nuclear capabilities include the RS-28 Sarmat or Satan-2 ICBM, a heavy liquid-fueled missile capable of carrying multiple warheads, up to 15 MIRVs. This missile is designed to penetrate missile defense systems and target major U.S. cities or military installations. Range over 18,000 kilometers or 11,200 miles. Payload up to 40 megatons of TNT in a single warhead with multiple warhead options. R-36M, or SS-18 Satan. Known as one of the most powerful ICBMs in the world, the R-36M remains a cornerstone of Russia's nuclear deterrence. Payload, 10 MIRVs, each with a thermonuclear warhead. Range, 16,000 kilometers, or about 10,000 miles. Russia has developed the 3M-22 Zircon, a hypersonic missile capable of carrying a nuclear warhead. Its speed and maneuverability make it extremely difficult to intercept. Speed, Mach 8 to 9, or around 9,800 to 11,000 kilometers per hour. Range, up to 1,000 kilometers, or 620 miles. China's rapid modernization of its nuclear arsenal is aimed at creating a credible deterrent against the U.S. and other powers. China maintains a no-first-use nuclear policy, but its military doctrines have evolved, with increasing emphasis on the potential use of nuclear weapons in a conflict. DF-41 ICBM, China's most advanced ICBM, capable of carrying multiple nuclear warheads. The DF-41 is a critical part of China's nuclear deterrent, designed to counter U.S. and Russian missile defense systems. Range, 12,000 kilometers, or about 7,500 miles. Payload up to 10 MIRVs. The DF-5, also known by its NATO reporting name CSS-4, is a liquid-fueled intercontinental ballistic missile, or ICBM, developed by China. The DF-5 is capable of reaching over 12,000 kilometers, or 7,500 miles, allowing it to target virtually any location on the globe, including the continental United States. The DF-5 is designed to carry a single nuclear warhead, although it has been rumored that some variants could potentially carry multiple independently targetable reentry vehicles, or MIRVs, allowing for multiple targets to be attacked with a single missile. North Korea North Korea's nuclear ambitions have become a significant point of tension. While its nuclear arsenal is relatively small compared to Russia or China, its ballistic missile technology and willingness to escalate confrontations make it a potent threat. Hwasong-15 ICBM North Korea's longest-range missile, capable of reaching the U.S. mainland, particularly the West Coast. Range, over 13,000 kilometers, or 8,100 miles. Typically carries a single warhead, but there are indications that North Korea may seek to develop MIRVs. Wasong-17 ICBM. An even larger missile that has been tested, with a potential range to target U.S. cities across the country. Range up to 15,000 kilometers or 9,320 miles. Payload likely capable of carrying multiple warheads. The United States possesses one of the world's most advanced nuclear arsenals, 
with approximately 5,550 nuclear warheads, both deployed and non-deployed. The B-83 gravity bomb is one of the most potent weapons in the U.S. nuclear inventory, designed to penetrate deep underground facilities. It's a powerful tool for targeting fortified sites that are difficult to destroy with conventional weapons. Yield range, up to 1.2 megatons, making it one of the most powerful weapons in the U.S. arsenal. Delivery platforms, strategic bombers such as the B-2 Spirit and B-52 Stratofortress. Minuteman III ICBMs, or Intercontinental Ballistic Missiles. Deployed in 1970 and continually upgraded for reliability and effectiveness, the Minuteman III ICBM is a key part of the U.S. nuclear triad. Payload can carry up to three MIRVs, each with a nuclear warhead. Guidance, advanced inertial navigation system for pinpoint accuracy. Speed, reaches up to Mach 23, or about 28,400 kilometers per hour, or about 17,600 miles per hour, enabling rapid global reach. Trident II SLBMs, or submarine-launched ballistic missiles. Known for their precision, stealth, and long range, Trident II SLBMs are deployed from nuclear-powered submarines and form a key part of the U.S. deterrent strategy. Payload can carry up to 12 MIRVs, depending on treaty constraints. Guidance system, stellar inertial navigation, ensuring high accuracy, even at extreme ranges. Range, approximately 12,000 kilometers, or 7,500 miles. In the event of a nuclear conflict, the safety of the U.S. president is paramount, not just for national leadership, but to maintain continuity of command and ensure that retaliatory actions can be taken if necessary. The U.S. has a comprehensive and well-established protocol in place for protecting the president during a nuclear attack or crisis. One of the key tools for the U.S. president in a nuclear emergency is a nuclear football, a briefcase that contains everything the president needs to authorize a nuclear strike, including authentication codes. The satchel includes classified communication and authentication codes required for verifying the president's identity and transmitting orders for a nuclear strike. Strike options. It also contains predetermined nuclear strike options, providing the president with a range of military responses in the event of a nuclear attack. Secure communication equipment. The football is equipped with communication tools, including satellite phones and encrypted radio systems, ensuring the president can maintain communication with military leaders and other key officials. The football is always with the president, carried by a military aide wherever the president goes, in case of a nuclear attack or other existential threats to the nation, the U.S. president has access to Air Force One, a specially equipped aircraft designed to keep the president safe while allowing them to exercise command over the military. Air Force One can function as a flying command center. The aircraft is capable of controlling military operations, including directing nuclear retaliation, even if the president is far from Washington, D.C. In the event of a nuclear strike or national emergency, the continuity of government, or COG system, ensures that the president, along with other key leaders, can remain in command. The U.S. government maintains underground facilities that can house the president, vice president, and other high-ranking officials in case of a nuclear attack. These facilities, like Raven Rock Mountain Complex and Mount Weather, are designed to withstand nuclear blasts and provide shelter and communication capabilities. Imagine it's the middle of the night at NORAD's headquarters in Colorado Springs. Monitors light up with a sudden burst of activity. ICBMs have been launched from Russian territory. Within seconds, the U.S.'s early warning systems kick into high gear. Satellites detect missile heat signatures, transmitting real-time trajectory data to ground stations. Advanced radars across the U.S. and allied territories calculate impact zones, providing critical minutes for defensive action. With incoming missiles confirmed, the U.S. deploys its multi-layered missile defense systems. Fortunately, the U.S. has invested billions into missile defense systems. But the question remains, will these systems be enough? The first line of defense against an incoming ICBM is the Ground-Based Mid-Course Defense System, or GMD. 
GMD is designed to intercept nuclear warheads during their mid-course phase, which is the time when they are traveling through space, just before re-entry into Earth's atmosphere. During this phase, missile defense systems can target warheads as they are in a predictable trajectory. The ground-based interceptors, or GBI, are launched from silos in places like Alaska and California to intercept and destroy ICBMs in space. These interceptors travel at high speeds, relying on kinetic energy to destroy the incoming missile. GMD uses a combination of radar systems, such as the sea-based X-band radar, and satellite tracking to pinpoint the exact location of the missile in space. However, GMD has limitations. Its success rate is somewhat contested. The system is designed to intercept missiles during a time when they are still on a predictable flight path, but advanced countermeasures like decoys, MIRVs, and decoy warheads can overwhelm the system. The U.S. has only 44 GBIs currently in operation, which limits the number of missiles that can be intercepted at once. While GMD handles missile defense in space, Aegis Ballistic Missile Defense, or BMD, operates in the terminal phase of a missile's flight when it's re-entering the Earth's atmosphere. Aegis uses Standard Missile 3, or SM-3, interceptors launched from Navy destroyers and cruisers. These interceptors are designed to intercept missiles up to 100 kilometers in altitude, well above commercial airliners, but lower than ICBM re-entry speeds. The Aegis system excels at handling short to medium-range ballistic missiles, but it can also play a role in intercepting ICBMs. While Aegis isn't the primary line of defense for ICBM strikes, it adds an extra layer of protection, especially for regional missile threats. As the missile gets closer to its target, the Terminal High Altitude Area Defense, or THAAD, system comes into play. THAAD is designed to intercept missiles in the terminal phase, just before they strike their target. The system uses hit-to-kill technology, meaning it destroys the incoming missiles by physically colliding with it at speeds greater than Mach 8. In other words, the intercepting missile hits the target with such force that it effectively destroys the warhead. That is deployed in many places around the world and has a range of up to 200 kilometers. This gives it the capability to protect against regional missile threats, including North Korean ICBMs. However, against a full-scale Russian nuclear attack, THAAD may only be able to intercept a limited number of missiles. In the event of a missile strike on the U.S., it's important to consider what the enemy targets. The goal of a nuclear ICBM strike isn't just destruction, it's to cripple the U.S. and severely limit its ability to retaliate. The first targets of a nuclear strike would undoubtedly be the most populated cities, New York, Los Angeles, Washington, D.C., Chicago, and other strategic locations. Destroying these urban centers would have a devastating psychological impact, while also crippling the economic and political heart of the nation. Widespread civilian casualties and chaos would ensure a swift collapse of national morale. Adversaries would also target military bases, particularly those housing nuclear weapons, ICBM silos, and missile defense systems. Crippling U.S. military capabilities would make it impossible for the U.S. to retaliate or defend itself. Key bases such as Mino Air Force Base, North Dakota, and Vandenberg Air Force Base, California, would be the top of the target list. Finally, the enemy would strike at critical infrastructure, energy grids, transportation networks, and communication hubs. The goal here would be to paralyze the country, making it harder for the U.S. to organize a defense or recovery. Despite these defenses, no system is foolproof. Some missiles evade interception, striking key cities like Washington, D.C. and New York. As the first impacts occur, the U.S. initiates a measured but devastating counterstrike to neutralize Russia's nuclear capabilities. The U.S.'s survivable nuclear arsenal ensures that, even after a first strike, it can respond decisively. An Ohio-class submarine in the Arctic launches Trident II D-5 missiles. Each missile splits into multiple warheads or MIRVs, targeting Russian missile silos, naval bases, and airfields. Minuteman 3 missiles roar out of silos across the Midwest, targeting Russian Strategic Rocket Forces facilities like the Kozelsk Missile Field. B-2 Spirit stealth bombers penetrate Russian air defenses, delivering B-83 thermonuclear bombs to command centers and missile launch facilities. The U.S. employs a flexible response doctrine, enabling a proportional and targeted reaction. Number 1. 
limited counterforce strike. Neutralize key Russian missile sites, such as the Votkinsk plant or mobile Topol M ICBMs, while avoiding population centers. Number two, regional tactical strike. A low yield W76 II warhead launched from a Trident missile targets a military base in Kaliningrad, deterring further aggression. Number three, full scale counterforce strike. A comprehensive attack disables Russia's nuclear infrastructure, including command bunkers like the Kozvinsky Mountain Complex and submarine bases at Gajevo. In the event of a nuclear attack, the U.S. would retaliate with devastating force through the Doctrine of Mutually Assured Destruction, or MAD. This means that even if a portion of the U.S. is destroyed, the enemy would face total annihilation in return. The U.S. arsenal of ICBMs, submarine-launched ballistic missiles, or SLBMs, and nuclear-capable bombers would ensure that no adversary could survive an all-out nuclear war. Missile defense systems can intercept some missiles, but they can never guarantee 100% protection. The real deterrence lies in the U.S. retaliatory capability, which is designed to deliver devastating punishment to any nation that dares to launch a nuclear strike. As technology evolves, the cat-and-mouse game of missile defense and attack will continue. The U.S. must remain vigilant and invest in next-generation systems that can counter advanced threats like Russia's Satan-2 and North Korea's Wasong-17. While defense systems can certainly intercept many missiles, the only surefire way to guarantee national survival is through a credible deterrent strategy, ensuring that any nation thinking of launching a nuclear attack on the U.S. will face an inevitable and catastrophic retaliation.